In this video, we're learning about the human gas exchange system. So we'll cover the structure of the gas exchange system, how alveoli carry out gas exchange, and then finally, the adaptations of the human gas exchange system. Let's begin with the structure of the human gas exchange system. The main thing to remember is that our body cells carry out respiration, and this is how they release the energy we need for functions like thinking, feeling, and the muscle contractions we use to move. Our cells need oxygen for respiration, and without oxygen, they wouldn't be able to release energy and we wouldn't be able to survive. We're going to follow the journey of oxygen through the human gas exchange system, which all start when we breathe in air that contains oxygen. It first enters through our nose or mouth, and then travels down the trachea, which is also known as the windpipe. The air then moves into two bronchi, and each bronchus, which is what we call just one of these bronchi, leads to one of the two lungs. These bronchi then split into smaller tubes called bronchioles, which keep getting smaller and smaller until the air reaches tiny sacs at the end called alveoli. These alveoli are surrounded by tiny blood vessels called capillaries. And if we look more closely at just one alveolus, this is actually where gas exchange happens. As oxygen moves from the air in the alveolus into the blood in the capillaries, Oxygen enters red blood cells, which contain hemoglobin, a substance that lets them carry oxygen through the bloodstream to the body cells, where it's then used for respiration. It's important you remember that respiration produces carbon dioxide as a waste product, and it travels in the opposite direction to oxygen. It moves from the body cells into the blood, which carries it to the capillaries surrounding the alveoli. Once it's moved into the alveoli, the air containing carbon dioxide moves through these bronchioles, bronchi, and trachea, and finally out through the nose or mouth and into the air when we exhale. Next, let's look at how the alveoli carry out gas exchange. The way gases move between the alveoli and the capillaries surrounding them is called diffusion. And we use this word to describe the movement of substances from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. For instance, let's say this is the direction of blood arriving from the body cells to the capillary next to this alveolus. And this is the direction of blood leaving the lungs that will eventually be returned to the body cells. The blood in the capillary doesn't have much oxygen because most of it has been used up by the body cells. But the air in the alveolus has lots of oxygen that's just been inhaled. So, oxygen diffuses down or along its concentration gradient from an area of high concentration in the alveolus to an area of low concentration in the blood. On the other hand, because it's been produced by body cells during respiration, there's lots of carbon dioxide in the capillaries around the alveolus. And so in the blood here, there's a high concentration of carbon dioxide. However, there's usually not much carbon dioxide in the air in the alveolus, so it's got a low concentration here. This means carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the alveolus, and from there it can be exhaled out of the body. The blood vessels leaving the lungs carry oxygen away to the body cells, and this keeps the oxygen concentration in the capillaries low around the alveoli, and so oxygen can keep diffusing into the blood. Next, we're going to take a look at the adaptations of the human gas exchange system. So we'll see how the trachea and bronchi bronchioles, alveoli, and pulmonary blood vessels are all adapted to their functions. Starting with the trachea and bronchi, the function of these airways is to transfer air from our mouth and nose to the smaller airways in our lungs, so they need to stay open and unobstructed in order to allow air to pass easily, and they've got several different adaptations that help them do this. First, to prevent them from collapsing, the trachea and bronchi are reinforced with cartilage. In the trachea, this cartilage is arranged in C-shaped rings, while in the bronchi, the cartilage is more irregularly shaped. Second, they're surrounded by smooth muscle, which we can see in this cross-section through an airway here. This muscle can contract and relax, and this controls the diameter of the airway and regulates airflow. This allows your body to adjust how much air gets in and out. And third, these airways have elastic tissue that contains elastic fibers made of elastin. These let the airway stretch when you breathe in and then recoil back to their original shape when you breathe out. 
Fourth, the inner lining of the trachea and bronchi is made of ciliated epithelium tissue, and this contains goblet cells that produce mucus to trap pathogens and other particles, like this goblet cell is doing here. And it also contains ciliated epithelial cells that have tiny hair-like structures called cilia on their surface that waft the mucus up to your mouth so you can swallow it, moving it along the airway like this. And then finally, these airways are patrolled by macrophages that engulf and destroy debris and pathogens that might harm your body. Next, let's move on to the bronchioles, which are these smaller airways that function to transfer air between the bronchi and the alveoli, which remember are these pink bits. As for their adaptations, unlike the trachea and bronchi, bronchioles don't have cartilage, which means that they can change shape more easily. They still contain smooth muscle and elastic tissue though, which gives them the flexibility in their shape to regulate airflow and lets them stretch and recoil. For their lining, larger bronchioles have ciliated epithelium, but smaller bronchioles have simple squamous epithelium, which is a smoother tissue with no cilia that helps direct air into the alveoli. If we move on to the alveoli, these are tiny air sacs that function as the site of gas exchange, and they have loads of adaptations for this role. First, the alveoli walls are really thin because they're made of just one layer of squamous epithelial cells, and this means there's a really short diffusion distance for gases to cross. Second, these walls are partially permeable, meaning only certain gases can diffuse across them, like oxygen and carbon dioxide. Third, the alveoli have a large surface area because there are hundreds of millions of alveoli in the lungs, and this increases the overall rate of diffusion. Fourth, alveoli have elastic fibers that let them stretch as they fill with air and then recoil as they release it. They've also got collagen fibers that prevent them from overstretching and bursting as well, though. Also, the moist inner surface of the alveoli contains surfactant, which is a substance that both allows gases to dissolve and also helps keep the alveoli inflated. And lastly, ventilation, the movement of air in and out of the lungs, helps maintain a steep diffusion gradient. To finish up, let's look at the pulmonary blood vessels, which are just the blood vessels involved in gas exchange in the lungs, because the term pulmonary always refers to the lungs. Let's grab a picture of the heart to see how it connects to the lungs. But remember that in reality it's not this simple, and there are other blood vessels that branch from the heart too. For now, we're just going to look at the pulmonary blood vessels, which include the pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, and pulmonary capillaries. The pulmonary artery delivers deoxygenated blood from the heart to the pulmonary capillaries in the lungs. The pulmonary vein delivers oxygenated blood from the pulmonary capillaries back to the heart. So this vessel is the pulmonary artery as it's going from the heart to the lungs, and this vessel is the pulmonary vein as it's going from the lungs back to the heart. The pulmonary capillaries are these vessels that surround the alveoli, and they're the site of gas exchange between the blood and the alveoli, so they have a few adaptations to make this exchange as efficient as possible. First, like the alveoli, they have really thin walls, just one endothelial cell thick, so there's a very short diffusion distance for gases to cross. Second, Red blood cells press against these walls, which reduces the diffusion distance even more. Third, the large surface area of the capillaries increases the speed of diffusion, while the movement of blood maintains a steep diffusion gradient. And finally, blood moves relatively slowly through these capillaries, allowing more time for diffusion to occur. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.